الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. In today's episode of Food for Thought, I want you to really listen good, bithnilahi ta'ala. Because never put yourself in a situation where someone can tell you, you lost the milk last summer. Naam? Never allow yourself to be put in that situation, ever. Bithnilahi ta'ala, we'll come to see what is the significance and what is the meaning of this, of this statement to begin with in the Aslan. This statement is based upon a proverb that comes in Arabic, which states, As-sayfa laban, which literally means, the summer, you lost the milk. Meaning, as it comes inside of another narration of this particular statement, Tusayfi dhaya'ati laban, Tusayfi that in the summer, you lost the milk. In the summer, you lost the milk. Now, this particular proverb is one that is, is fairly well known in amongst the, the Arab and in the Arab world. And is one that I wanted to share because the takeaway from it is something that is tremendous and is something that we should really contemplate on because it will affect our daily life. Ma'am. Uh, and inshallah ta'ala, if you have gained any benefit from this channel in which way, shape, and form, then we ask you to please subscribe to it, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications so you know when new episodes come, and share it with others, bithnilahi ta'ala. But nonetheless, let us get back. Listen, never put yourself in a situation where someone can say to you, you lost the milk last summer. Naam. The origin of this proverb is that there was a, a woman, and her name, they say her name was, Dakhtanus bint Laqita. Naam. And she was married to a man named Amr. And Amr, he was an old man. He was an older gentleman. He had a lot of wealth, a lot of resources. Naam, or he had some wealth and resources. He was financially stable. And she was married to him. But she began not to like him. And she began to gaze and look for something else. Something that she deemed was going to be better a better situation for her. So she grew to hate him due to this. And it came to a point where he divorced her. He let her go. Naam. Because who wants to be married to a woman who hates him? Right? So the obvious thing is, let her go. She wants to go, let her go. So he let her go. He divorced her. And he, when he divorced her, she married a, a, a young man who... They say he was very pretty. Jamil al Wedge. Naam. He was very handsome. He was a handsome man. So he had some looks to him. And so she married this man. But this man, this younger man, he was not as financially stable. So it came a point where there were some hard times that had, that had hit that region. Hard times. Naam. And in that time, they were in need of some milk. Now, Amr, her previous husband, her ex, he had a lot of animals that produced milk, so milk was easy for him. Naam. So she sent word to him asking and requesting that Amr, her ex husband, give her and her new husband some milk. Naam. So Amr, his response unto her was a saifa laban. In the summertime or the summertime, you lost the milk. Huh? And it comes in another narration In the summertime You lost the milk Because she, she had access to it When she was married to him She had full access to whatever she wanted from the milk She had milk anytime ma'am, That she wanted But because she was displeased with him And his situation And she wanted somebody else Then she put herself in a, in a worse situation Now so the takeaway from this proverb, and when this proverb is said to unto an individual, is when they are given an opportunity that is a good opportunity, but then 
due to plummet, due to a craving or a desire, due to some type of greed, right? Wanting something else. They leave that situation and they end up in a worse state, a worse situation. And then they have to double back to the people in the original situation that they left and then ask for a favor and to ask for something. So when that happens, then the they would they, they, they will say to the individuals who were ungrateful and who left and they now come back asking, in the, in the, in the summer, you lost the milk. Man. Meaning, so his answer to her was what? Was no, you're not getting no milk. You had access to it. You wanted to leave me for this young guy and now you want milk? You ain't getting no milk. Uh -huh. So the point is, Never put yourself in type in, in, in that situation. The way that you would never put yourself in that situation or from the ways in which you would never put yourself in that situation is to become appreciative over what you have. How often is it the case that individuals become displeased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them and then they look for something else? As opposed to counting the blessings, they count the calamities. As opposed to counting the pros, they count the cons and they focus in on the cons. And then they end up leaving a good situation due to being short-sighted, due to not looking at the, 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 the bigger picture. They'll leave a good situation and they'll jump into something that is worse, only to regret and sometimes actually try to double back to the situation which they left. So it is important and as Muslims that we are always looking at the good and we are always looking at the pros and the upsides of situations so that we can maintain positivity and be positive. Because an individual who is negative and, a, and an individual who is pessimistic, then this is an individual who the shaitan can play a lot of games with. This is an individual who the shaitan can easily get this person to you know, um, be ungrateful to the, the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being grateful and be able to see the upside and everything is very tremendous. Now, when we look at, just as a side point, the, the, the incident where Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wa salam, he visited his son Ismail, alayhi salatu wa salam, and when he approached the door, his first wife, and he asked him, how are things? The first wife, she kept complaining. She kept complaining. So Ibrahim, he gave word to his son to do what? Divorce this woman, because all she looks at is the bad. Complaint, 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 complaint. Then he came back after that, and he, uh, Ismail, والسلام, he married a new wife, and the historians, they mentioned that the situation was actually worse. They were in a rough, rougher situation. And when he asked the new wife, how was everything, she responded with good. She responded with good because she saw the upside. She was positive. She focused in on yeah, any, uh, the benefits and the pros because no matter what situation you're in there, there's always an upside There's always one someone who's in a worse situation You always have to reflect that worse has happened to better because look at the prophets and the messengers If you suffer from sickness then reflect on Ayyub alayhi salatu salam Worse has happened to better Okay, so when you reflect on the likes of these things and that there are individuals who are in a worse situation than you Then subhanallah you're able to reflect and to focus in on the good you're able to reflect and focus in on what is going in your favor, what is positive from the, the, the bounties that, you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. The fact that you can see, you can hear, you, your tongue works, you can make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can read the Quran. Yeah, subhanAllah. All of this yeah, is a blessing. So no matter what else is not you know, going your way, like for, for lack of a better term, you have so many things that are in your favor, so many blessings that you are benefiting from. So always concentrate and focus in on that which is good. And never put yourself in a situation where you get so caught up in a small aspect, right, of, of, of meaning you're in a situation where it's a good situation, but you focus on a negative. And then another situation uh, comes up and you start focusing on a small aspect of that situation, not taking the whole of it into consideration. And so that's when you weigh, your weighing is not just. Your weighing is not accurate. Your assessment is not accurate because you deem, oh, this thing is better. And it may be better in that one aspect. But then when you look at the other nine of the ten aspects, it's not better. When you look at the situation that you're in, okay, it may be lacking in that one aspect. Or let's add to it two aspects for argument's sake. But then you have eight aspects out of the ten that are actually in your favor, that are better for you. So now in that situation, which one would you which which one is better? The one that has one advantage or the one that has eight advantages? Of course, one has eight. 
But if you get so caught up in looking at that one thing that is better, you say, no, 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 I got to go because of X, Y, Z, then subhanAllah, how many people, they leave good women, how many men leave good women for a woman who was a knucklehead because of whatever, you know, whatever the case is. This one is a little older, this, this new one, she is younger, so on and so forth. So he fears, oh, this one, she can no longer have children. This one, she can have children. So then he goes and he leaves the, the loyal wife, the one who cooked for him, the one who stood by his side, the one who is battle proven, right? She's proven that she stuck with him for all these years. But he leaves her for this young one who is not battle tested. You don't know how she's going to perform. You don't know if she's loyal. You don't know if she's truthful. You don't, you don't, you know, you know, you know. Oh, but she can have children. But then you find she can have children, but she's a liar. She's she's not loyal. Huh? She's steady. She, she, she's flirting and talking with other men, so on and so forth. So now, <laughs> who was better? Yeah, subhanAllah. This happens all the time. Now, I can do a whole episode on this. And bithnillahi ta'ala, perhaps in the future, we'll do one that is based on marriage as relates to this particular topic. But for now, we'll, we'll, I'll just leave that and just say that. But the overall point is, reflect on this and apply this into your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Inna al-insana li rabbihi lakanood. That verily, the human being to his Lord is most ungrateful. Lakanood, ungrateful. Then he asked Hassan al-Basri about the meaning of this particular verse. He mentioned, he says, Huwa alladhi ya'udda al-masa'ib. This is the one who he counts the calamities. And he forgets the blessings and the bounties of his Lord. This is the one who he counts calamities. And he forgets or she forgets the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them. Let me give you a quick example. An individual, they fracture. May Allah ta'ala give us all safety. Afiyah wa salama. Naam. They fracture their leg. Okay? They fracture or they break. Let's say they break their leg. They break their leg. And they break their leg perhaps in a few places. They have to get surgery. They, it, it hurts. They have to go through rehab and so on and so forth. And all they can focus in on, I broke my leg. I broke my leg. I can't go to work. I can't jog like I used to. I'm going to gain weight. It hurts so much. So on and so on. That's all they're focusing on. But yeah, subhanAllah, you broke your leg. Why not look at it from another standpoint? Alhamdulillah, I just broke my leg. It did not get amputated. I'm in rehab, but Alhamdulillah, I'm going to be able to use it again. It's going to heal. I'm getting reward because of the pain and discomfort, sins of removing, right? I'm out of work right now, but Alhamdulillah, it gives me more time. I can read Quran. I can read the Quran more, I can memorize the Quran, I can study my religion, right? I could, yani, whatever the case is, you can better yourself. You have an opportunity. So instead of looking at it like that, they look at it the opposite way, everything negative. Not reflecting. You lost, you, you, you broke your leg. Some people, they don't have legs. Some people don't have legs. So we have to be of individuals who are appreciative of what we have. How many children are, are not appreciative for what their parents have done for them? How many children are not appreciative? Their parents strive their best to teach them and educate them about Islam, to put them in good neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods, where they don't have to worry about getting robbed, yani, walking down the street or getting hit with a straight bullet, so on and so forth. That takes effort. Those areas are not cheap. But their parents strove. They did what they did. Their father worked hard. The mother yani, uh, uh, worked hard in rearing the children, so on and so forth, to what? So to raise them in this type of situation. And then the children grow up. And then this is everything, you know, they taught them how to pray, taught them in Fatiha, taught them Quran, you know, uh, took them to the masjid, got them acclimated to, 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 to fasting, Ramadan, to covering, to, 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 to praying, to being a good Muslim, teach them how to live and be a good Muslim and so on and so forth. And then they grow up and act like their parents never did for them anything. Inna al-insana li rabbihi lakanood. Verily, insan, the human being, they are most ungrateful to their Lord. Why? Because they're constantly counting the calamities while forgetting the bounties. So don't be like this. Don't be like the individual who leaves a good situation 
jump into something that is worse and then now want to double back just to find that the door gets slammed in their face and it is said to them, you lost the milk last summer. Ila liqa. Until next time we meet. Estawdi'ukum Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.